Hi everyone, indeed, I am Alex. I'm a PhD student at Stanford. I study cryptography and formal methods. And today I'm gonna to be telling you about a new cryptographic primitive. We're calling it a collaborative ZK snark. It supports zero knowledge proofs for distributed secrets. Traditionally, zero knowledge applies to localized information. Consider, for example, authentication. In this scenario, some client wants to show to a server that the client has the right secret key. In this case, the secret information is the secret key and it's held by one party. So traditional zero knowledge tools apply. And indeed a ZK snark, um, like Jess was working with, would suffice to solve this problem. However, not all secret information is localized. Consider another scenario. A collection of banks have evidence that some entity, Eve, has obtained a ransom paid by Colonial Pipeline. And these banks want to prove that that statement is true. This amounts to showing the existence of, oops, of a certain kind of path in the global transaction graph. And the challenge here is that the global transaction graph is probably not public. Different entities are aware of different edges. And so the existence of this path is a property of distributed secret information. Even if, even if uh, the secret information is not initially distributed like it is here, you might want to distribute it for other reasons. Perhaps you have some entity that wants to write a zero knowledge proof, but as we heard, this is expensive. So maybe the entity wants to secret share its data among a collection of helpful servers and solicit their help in writing the proof. Once again, we end up in a situation where the secret knowledge is distributed among different parties. So either way, when the secret information is distributed, ZK snarks do not apply. And the contribution of this work is a primitive, a collaborative ZK snark that does apply. So first, we give de a definition of this primitive. Second, we give constructions from four different conventional ZK snarks. We give implementations based on three of these. And finally, we evaluate our implementations. In this evaluation, we find a somewhat surprising fact, which is that collaborative proofs can be just as efficient as their conventional counterparts, despite the fact that there's some kind of interactive protocol. So in this talk, I'll tell you about a little, I'll tell you a little bit about our definition. I'll discuss one technique that we use in the construction, and I'll tell you about one of the experiments from our evaluation. Definitions first. What is a collaborative ZK snark? Well, it's easiest to understand through comparison. In a conventional ZK snark, as we heard before, there's a prover who has public data denoted X secret data denoted W, and the prover produces some proof that shows that a predicate phi holds for this information. In the collaborative setting, we just replace the single prover with multiple provers. In this diagram three, all the provers have access to the public data, but they each have a different piece of secret data, W1, W2, and W3. The idea is that the different provers interact with one another in order to construct pi, a single non-interactively verifiable proof that now, show, that now shows some property about the vector of secrets. So syntactically, the generalization is, is not very substantial here. We're just moving from a proving process that's a local algorithm to one that is an interactive protocol among the different provers. So this is all that changes. Note the uh, output of the proving protocol is, is still the same. It's still a non-interactively verifiable proof. So this is the syntax, what about security? Well, I'll just talk about one security property today, T0 knowledge. You see, in the collaborative setting, you don't just have to worry about the verifier learning secret information that it shouldn't learn. You also need to worry about other provers learning secret information during the proof construction. T0 knowledge rules this out. Informally, it says that an adversary who controls at most T provers should learn nothing about the other witnesses beyond the fact that the witnesses are collectively valid. Pictorially, this means that if there are five provers, three of them are controlled by an adversary, and the protocol has three zero knowledge or better, this adversary shouldn't learn anything about witnesses four and five beyond the fact that the witnesses are collectively valid. It's, it's impossible to avoid leaking validity because the whole point here is to prove validity. In the paper, we formalize this in the style of a simulation definition. We imagine what an adversary would see and require that that adversary's view be simulatable given only the corrupt witnesses, the public data, and the validity bit. So this is one of our security definitions. There are, of course, more in the paper. Uh, but let's move on to constructions. Before I get into the constructions in full, I need to clarify the scope of the proof systems that we develop in this paper. In particular, so far, I've been talking about an abstract predicate and abstract witnesses um, and, and of course, that's not something that you can build a proof system for. So in particular, we assume a pre-processing phase where we compile the predicate from whatever arbitrary form it has originally into a specific format called R1CS, the same format that traditional zero knowledge proofs use. Moreover, this compiler outputs an encoder which transforms the witnesses from their original distributed form 
into an R1CS witness that is secret shared among the prover. And then once you have this, the R1CS predicate and the secret shared R1CS witnesses, this is where our work comes into the picture. We essentially develop collaborative ZK SNARKs for secret shared R1CS witnesses. This kind of division, as I said, is, is standard. This is how conventional ZK SNARKs work. And the advantage of it is it separates the details of a particular relation from how you go about building the proof system, a division of concerns, if you would. The one difference in how this division works in our scenario is um, that the encoder is now a multi-party protocol. Okay, but that aside, focusing on the green box, how do we construct a collaborative proof uh, for secret shared R1CS witnesses? Well, I'll tell you about just one of the techniques that we use. Um, well, or sorry, first of all, I'll, I'll discuss the general approach. So the general approach here is actually somewhat immediate. There exist general purpose MPC, multi-party computation protocols, for evaluating any computation over secret shared data, at least in theory. So we should just take one of those protocols and run it on the SNARK prover. What goes wrong? Well, the thing is that this could be wildly inefficient. Both MPC and SNARKs are known for being slow. Eh, ballpark a thousand times slower than the underlying computation. And so the fear is that this composition might be a million times slower than the underlying computation, which we think would be impractical for almost every application. And so the question is whether or not there's some way of affecting this composition, perhaps by customizing the MPC protocol in order to get better overhead smaller overhead. And indeed, our constructions show that that is possible. In some sense, these overheads, they don't need to multiply, they can add. And we end up with overhead more on the order of a, of a thousand or two thousand. So how do we do that? Like I said, I don't really have time to go into all the details today, but I'll tell you about one of the techniques that we use, which is how we handle elliptic curve operations. In many ZK SNARKs, elliptic curve operations are the bottleneck, at least in most parameter regimes. A representative operation is taking curve points G and H and adding them together in the elliptic curve. How could you handle this in an MPC? Well, many MPC protocols have native support for field operations, and elliptic curves can be represented in terms of field coordinates. So a natural approach is to represent these curve points uh, as their coordinates in a finite field, to secret share those coordinates in the MPC. Uh, for example, if you were using additive sharing, you might represent coordinate A as values A1 and A2 held by two different entities such that these values sum to A. If you go down this pathway, then what you have to do is inside the MPC, you have to evaluate the formulas defined over the coordinates that give you the coordinates of the sum. And the challenge is that this is very inefficient because those formulas are nonlinear. Uh, in MPC protocols, it turns out, are just less efficient on nonlinear computations. So we do not uh, take this approach. We do not secret share the coordinates. Instead, we secret share the curve points directly. You might imagine, if you were using an additive sharing scheme, representing a curve point G as two curve points, G1 and G2, which add, in the elliptic curve sense of the word, to G. If you take this additive approach, then computing the addition of two secret shared curve points is very easy. In fact, it's a local computation. Each uh, entity just adds its shares of the sum ends. Of course, the protocols that we build on, the MPC protocols, they don't use additive sharing. They're a little bit more advanced than that. But the intuition from additive sharing carries over. Previous researchers, in fact, have shown that techniques like this work for the speeds MPC, and uh, we observed that they also work for the GSC MPC, which was presented at Crypto two years ago. So this is one of the techniques we use, and it turns out that techniques like this end up making collaborative ZK SNARKs very efficient in practice, and I'll show you just one of the experiments that we performed in order to show that. In this experiment, uh, we're going to look at just collaborative uh, ZK SNARKs based on the GROT16 proof system running over a high capacity link, three gigabits per second. This is what you can get inside of a data center. This is what you can get over a LAN. Right now on the plot, I only have our baseline. This is a single prover proof, so it's not, it's not collaborative. Um, in fact, this was implemented by someone else, not by us. Uh, the x-axis, uh, as it goes to the right, we increase the complexity of the statement being proved, and that causes proving to take longer. The relationship is more or less linear. Let's see how a collaborative proof does. Um, so our implementation for two provers with zero knowledge against one of them, so one ZK, takes this long to prove. What you can see is when the number of rank one constraints gets sufficiently large, the collaborative proof is only two times slower than the baseline. And for three provers with two zero knowledge, you see exactly the same behavior, slightly more overhead at low statement complexities. When uh, you lower the zero knowledge threshold, so if you consider three provers with zero knowledge against only one malicious prover, uh, we see essentially no overhead at high constraint counts. So synthesizing the, the, the pattern here, it turns out that the relevant question is whether or not the zero knowledge threshold is low enough that we can assume the majority of the parties are honest. 
the majority of the proofers are honest. And if that uh, is the case, then we can use an honest majority protocol, GSC. We incur essentially no slowdown at high, constraint, at high numbers of constraints. And if that's not the case, we have to fall back to speeds, and we eat the 2x slowdown. I want to emphasize that both, both of these slowdowns are very good. Typically, secure multi-party computation is 100 to 10,000 times slower than local computation, and, and we're obviously not seeing that here. So this has just been a whirlwind tour of the project. Of course, there's more in the paper. We give precise definitions. We give constructions from four different conventional proof systems. We also give a whole host of implementations. We're able to do so many implementations because we come up with a kind of a cute technique that allows us to take conventional ZK SNARK proofers, proofers that maybe we didn't even implement, and automatically or nearly automatically lift them into interactive protocols. Uh, we, we then take all those implementations, we evaluate them, we include large numbers of parties and, and, and poorer networks than the one that we were just discussing. We even show a conditional communication complexity lower bound. So we show that if you're working with just two parties, you're using additive secret sharing, and your ZK SNARK satisfies a natural property, then the amount of communication that you need to do in order to construct um, a, a collaborative uh, ZK SNARK is going to be at least linear in the number of rank one constraints asymptotically. Uh, some of our constructions meet that bound, so that shows that in a very limited and partial sense they are asymptotically optimal. Okay, so this is the end. I've been telling you about collaborative ZK SNARKs. They support zero knowledge proofs for distributed secrets. If you forget everything else from the talk, you should remember that these systems can be very efficient. Uh, even if you want full zero knowledge, the slowdown can be as good as only 2x. And as a final reflective note, it's interesting to think about why collaborative proofs are so efficient. As I said, generally speaking, secure distributed computation is far slower than local computation. We're not seeing that here. And it's interesting to think about whether one might be able to design collaborative versions of other crypto systems that would have performance that is similarly good. I, I suspect that the answer is yes. Anyways, it's been a pleasure telling you about this, and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have.